this before. <laughs> I feel like a weird. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about the three pack, three pocket bag because it has three pockets. We have a pocket in the middle, right here. We have a pocket here, and we have a pocket over here. And it, it looks really hard to make, doesn't it? Well, it's really hard. Okay, so you can use it for a little purse and put a handle on it. And, you know, you can take this on shop hops or wherever. And, or you could use it as um, a little bag that you could take your your thread and stuff and put it in here. Um, it's a lot of fun for English paper piecing because you could put those in one side. You could go over here and you put your finished ones in here. So, see, there's all sorts of things you could do with this. Okay. Now, to tell you how to do this. The first thing you need to do is you need to have a quilted square. You can buy your quilted material in the store or you can make your own. And so you need a front, a back, and a back. And then you just quilt it, which is lots of fun. Okay, and then um, after you get your square all done, you fold it in half with the, the good side, what I call, the, fun, the be best part on the inside. And then you're going to take a ruler, and on this particular one, you're going to measure in eight and a half inches, and then you'll draw a line six and a half inches tall on the end. And then, okay, this is, this is actually the, the inside of the fabric that you're going to use for your bag. How big is the square? This square is uh, 18 inches, okay? So you, you, you go in eight and a half inches, draw your line, and then, then you need to take a pin and stick it through here and over here and on this side. And then pull this apart real gently and replace that pin here. What you're going to do, you'll have your pins out like this and you make a line straight across from the top of that pin and that's where you're going to put your Velcro in the center of here. Okay. So then after you get your Velcro stitched on there, put it back together. And then these these lines are your stitching lines. So you come over here and you will stitch, back stitch here and at the top because you don't want this to come apart. So you, you stitch on both of those lines and then here comes the fun part. So you get... Make sure the top is aligned. You see how it hangs out down there? So then you just cut around it. And then you come back here and you line it up. By right then, everything's square. You only have to get the end. It always has a dip there. It's right there. No matter how you start, it, no matter how you cut it. Thank you. 
news day can you do me <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to sing and dance up here but that's that's okay um, that's all right English paper piecing is a little different than than regular paper piecing in that um, we use a paper pattern for every single little piece that we do and I think most of you are probably familiar with uh, a grandmother's flower garden which um, I don't know if they, if they call it, if we all know it because all of our grandmothers made one, or if it was, it's just a real popular pattern. And um, these are, well this is, I'm gonna hold those up. Traditionally it has, a, you know, one hexagon in the center and then um, you build on your design around the, around the middle. <laughs> so that, and that's one way, and I think you use half inch three-quarter inch hexagon for that one. So there's a little paper. Here's the little piece of paper that you start with. And you can cut a little square that you go that you goes behind it, or you can use a template that's a plexiglass template. This is for a larger one. This is a one and a one and three quarter inch. And this has a three eighths inch um, seam allowance that's built into it so when you cut this out your fabric will automatically be um, large enough to go around the paper and it's all basted on by hand like this is one in progress and you can see the stitching where you baste it around the around the piece and then you just start assembling. And when you when you put them together, if you take all your little ones, and I, I brought a bigger one so I could show you. Um, this is a larger, this is that bit, the bigger one that I made with the larger template that I just showed you. And the paper's on the back. And you can buy these papers. Um, back door is probably the closest place to buy them if you don't get them online. But the little address, um, cards that are in all the magazines are the perfect weight paper. So if you are sitting there one day with nothing else to do, you can cut out your own papers. <laughs> Which I've done routinely because in area, invariably I think oh, I only need you know 50 of these or whatever and they're gone in an hour because it doesn't take much. So then I start cutting my own. But So I've got two here that are put together and after you've basted your fabric on you put them right sides together like that. And um, Dixie's the one who taught me to use a number 11 Milner's needle that um, is very, very fine. But it, it makes almost no hole whatsoever when you're stitching. And it's so easy just to do a nice little stitch right along that one edge. So it's just a... Can I see that closer? No. Yep, yeah, you can pass that around if you want to. It's all right. Now what I did with the larger, that larger hexagon was, um, this is just the top for a, a baby quilt that I started. And um, so just so you know, all those little shapes come together. I mean, I think everybody loves um, doing English paper piecing because you can take the pieces with you anywhere. And you can, as long as someone else is driving, you can do it in the car and in front of TV, you can take it to a meeting, you can, you know, just about anywhere to work on it. And then I, um, I applicate my border onto it because I don't necessarily like to cut them, you know, once they're, once they're on there. A lot of people will just take their ruler and cut and, um, and trim off that edge, but I kind of like leaving it. So I haven't decided if I'll put another border on this to make it a little bit bigger or not. So you start with two and then you add one more? Mm -hmm. Or do you do a bunch of twos and put them together? Well, you can, you can do it. I mean, to do this, to do this one, I did, it, I did them in rows. So I had a row of about 12 or 13 um, that I just sewed, you know, that one little piece, one right after another. And then when you go to put them together, they just fit right into each other. So Dixie's, she'll put another another white path around here. But when you put these together, 
even without that, you would put them right sides together and then just start stitching your your pieces together. And you said you use a 11? A uh, no, number 11 Milner's needle. And back door has so this is one that I started, I'm still working on it. But see, I only have a center and one row around that middle. And then I um, I started putting the yellow in the middle like that. And these are, there's some really old funky fabrics in here that I've been carrying around with me for 30 or 40 years and decided they were weird enough to throw in here. And some of them are just really amazing. but. Um, and I, you know, in, in this I used a combination of different white on white fabrics. So it, there's no really right or wrong way to do it. You can, you do it whatever way you want to. And I've seen beautiful ones where they've started in the middle, and they just keep going around and around and around. And yeah. And do you ever take the paper out? Yes. As soon as, as soon as you've enclosed one. That you've seen, you've added on all the way around. You can take the paper out. And they they come out. They pop out real easily once you once you pull out those basting threads. I've not taken any out of these yet, except for this one. Doesn't I've taken them out. And they do. No, you do. You try not to sew through the paper. <laughs> and then again, in, and in this one too, there's some of these are the commercial papers, and some are ones that. Dixie's cut from the, the papers out of the magazine. Yeah. And then you can actually, um, hexagons are not the only shape. And um, if you, especially if you go online to English paper piecing, you're going to find a huge variety of, of different ones. Now, this is done with a honeycomb. And the honeycomb is actually the same. The seams are the same length as with the hexagon, but it's just shaped differently. So this is my template for that. And um, the quilt I did that is a Lucy Boston patchwork of the crosses, it's the first one on the end here, was all done with this template. So all the pieces are either this or a little one inch square in, in that quilt. But this is how they start getting sewing together. And then there's a one inch square that went here as you, well, you start building out and filling with the little squares on that one. But there are triangles and octagons and diamonds and I don't, it's almost, it's amazing. There's a store in Paducah, Kentucky, that that's all they sell, or paper pieces, and they sell and there's there's some challenges out there online right now with absolutely gorgeous designs and they're they almost look like little dresden plates that are all swirling around and and moving in and out of each other and they're all done with with paper piecing so it's it's really kind of idiot's delight but it's it's an awful lot of fun <laughs> oh. Yeah, very addictive. How long does it take to do a quilt? <laughs> oh boy. Well, I've never done. I mean, I've only done one. Of, you know, and the one that no, the one that I did that's hanging here, it took me three years. Okay. And I I seriously worked on it every day. Okay. I did something on it every day. And enjoyed it. I loved it. I was, I was so sad when I got finished. It was, it was like, now what am I going to do? You know. But um, but so now I can now I can finish some of the other things that I had been working on. So that's okay. So any questions? When do you take the papers out? When? It's, well, you start out with just you know like with say with this one, you've got the one in the middle, and as soon as you 
as soon as, you, as you've sewn on the next row, this middle one will not lose its shape and you can pull the paper out. So, and then with the next row, as soon as you've sewn all the way around again, and, and it, just that one piece has to be totally sewn in all the way around, and you can pull the paper out. If you take the paper out ahead of that, you lose your shape, and you'll go crazy trying to pin it back or, you know, something. So, um, I think in this, in this little one, I pulled out all the papers except the very outer rim. So I'd have to sew, you know, something up here before I could pull this one out. Or, you know, it'd fall apart. And I haven't taken any of them on to put this one right here. Because if I make a mistake <laughs> and decide to do something different, you know, I want that shape left. So, do I have a take of mine now? <laughs> but we usually think about doing it in, in circles, but there's no reason why you can't do it in rows. And, um, you know, to do a little table runner or something like that to get your feet wet would be, would be fun, or just even a kind of a round doily shape or, you know, for a, a table would be a really fun way to start and um, see what you think. I have like two questions. Uh, do you iron as you uh, put the base of paper or anything like that? Nope, I don't do any ironing until it's all done and ready to... Um, Once you go like this and this and you get your basting in it, it doesn't really need it because by the time you get it all sewn, it is that shape. It doesn't really lose. So when you're basing, you go through your paper. Here, you can look at these. And you know, actually, if you, as long as you don't iron it, um, when you fold over, there's the paper. It doesn't go all the way into the fold. It's like you don't want to make it so tight that you don't have that little bit of space up there for your needle. And it's really easy. You get used to how that feels, and you can just whip it right along. Now there is a kind of a glue stick that um, you can also buy and when I was doing these bigger ones I had a hard time holding uh, my seam allowance down so that I could stitch it and I glued the opposite, two opposite sides so this one and this one were glued down with the glue stick which was just enough to hold the paper in there so I could stitch it. And there were a couple places on that on that quilt that I went ahead and glued the edges, but it was only because I needed them to be absolutely perfectly straight in the design of the fabric I was using. But otherwise, I didn't like to glue. And the glue is nothing that um, I can stick my finger under here and just pop it right out. It doesn't really. It's not like Elmer's. <laughs> No, it's not a permanent glue. It's strictly, it's, it's strictly for fabric. Well, I thought when you ironed it, that's what I thought. Pardon me? I thought when you ironed it, that's not permanent. No, I wouldn't iron it with the glue in there. Yeah, that, oh, that's the glue that I bought. You iron it, and then you can open it up. <coughs> I haven't tried that. Pardon? It melts. But she has glue that she irons, and then it comes off. Oh. That it releases. It's a special glue right off, though. Yeah. Any guess? Well, paper piecing, um, we had a lesson on that yesterday, and you start with a paper pattern, and then you lay your fabric on it and sew right through the paper and fold it over, and then you add it to the next piece. Your, on your pattern, all the little pieces are numbered and you lay your fabric on, sew it, and flip it, and sew it, and flip it, according to the pattern that's on the paper. And this is all done with the paper as a, um, as a painting. I don't know, you, it gives you the pattern. I mean, the paper itself gives you the pattern, and it's one little piece at a time. It's by machine. So this is all, this is all done by hand. So. All done? Thank you.
you. Thank you for coming.